Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and watchOS 9.1 released to the public and is available to all watchOS 9 supported devices at the same time everywhere around the world. And this came in at a fairly small 204 megabytes on my Apple Watch Ultra and should be about the same size on any device that you have that supports watchOS 9, although it can vary depending on which version you're actually upgrading from. Now, along with this, Apple also released iOS 16.1, iPadOS 16.1, macOS Ventura is finally out to the public as well, along with tvOS and HomePodOS 16.1. And then Apple also released iTunes, a new update for Windows to support the latest iPads. Now, if you're a beta tester or developer, this is the same version as watchOS 9.1 RC. So you can remove the beta profile. You just had it a little bit early, so you'll have the exact same version. And as far as what's new, let's go ahead and talk about that. And the first major update has to do with battery life. Now, unfortunately, the battery updates are only on the latest watches, Apple Watch Series 8, Apple Watch SE second generation, and the Apple Watch Ultra. They're doing this by extending battery life during outdoor walking, running, and hiking by turning off or reducing the frequency of it checking the heart rate and GPS readings. So it's reducing the amount of times or how often it actually checks your heart rate using the sensors. And and has to enable the GPS antenna. By doing that, they're saving significant power. This should also help with the Apple Watch Ultra, where they say it can get up to 60 hours of battery life using low power mode. So I wouldn't normally recommend enabling low power mode, and it actually warns you not to, as it disables a bunch of features on the Apple Watch Ultra. But if you're in the wilderness, you can't get back to a charger, then it's definitely worth enabling so that you can get back, maybe use it a little bit later as needed. So that's something that should be updated with the latest version. Now, something that comes to all watches has to do with music. The music app has been updated to allow you to download music to the watch directly over cellular and Wi-Fi without putting it on the charger. So before you had to use the charger in order to do that, now it will just download whenever you want, whether you're walking, hiking, or whatever you're using the watch for. If you don't have your phone there, you can still download it if you have cellular. If we go into our apps, You'll see here, if we go down to home, we now have support for Matter. Matter is a new standard that's now across iOS 16 and all of the other Apple devices that supports Matter accessories, which is a new standard that's going to be used across the industry, not only for iOS, but Android and more. So that's now supported across all of the different devices. So it's great to see that. Now, Apple also fixed quite a few things and improved watchOS as well. And one of the things they fixed in this update has to do with voice feedback, specifically during an outdoor run. So if we go into workouts, maybe you're using it for an outdoor run and it's announcing the pacing as you're running. That's something that sometimes could be inaccurate. So you're using it for a run. It's announcing the pacing, maybe in your AirPods, and sometimes it just wasn't correct. That should be accurate now. Also, if you're using the weather app, there's something that was wrong with that where they actually improved this. So if we go to weather, within the weather app specifically, the chance of rain estimates sometimes would not match what was on the iPhone. So if you were on the iPhone and it was telling you there was a chance of rain, you'll see currently it's sunny conditions, but if there was a chance of rain, sometimes it would give inaccurate readings. That should be correct now. If we go to our watch faces and slide over to the Wayfinder watch face that comes with Apple Watch Ultra, this will work on any of them, but the little rain complication or weather complication sometimes could show different times of day incorrectly, meaning that during the morning it could say PM hours or during PM hours it could say AM. This has been resolved in this update. Now, if you're using strength training workouts, they've updated this as well. So one of the workouts here is strength training. We'll just keep going here, functional strength training and during this, sometimes it wouldn't advance properly. So the time duration feature sometimes just wouldn't advance for some users. That should be fixed in this update. Also, if you're using voiceover, that should be improved. So if you're using accessibility features with voiceover, sometimes it wasn't announcing an app name prior to reading notifications if you've got a bunch of different notifications. So maybe you got some from messages or another messaging app. It would read your notification but not tell you what app it was from. 
that should be resolved and reporting properly. Now there's also security updates. Apple has updated their security website. I'll link this in the description so you can check this out if you want to, but it has all of the new and latest updates for iOS, iPad OS, Mac OS Monterey, even Big Sur, Mac OS Ventura, and more. We'll go down to watch OS 9.1 and we can see all of the security updates specific to the watch. You'll see everything from Apple mobile file integrity, AVE video encoder, CF network, GPU drivers, kernel, WebKit, which is the underlying code for Safari, and quite a few changes or updates to security here. You can see what's actually impacted or what the problem was. An app may be able to modify protected parts of the file system. This was for Apple Mobile File Integrity or Mobile File Integrity. And the description or the fix for it was this issue was addressed by removing additional entitlements. And then you have the CVE number and the person who either patched it or submitted the issue. And so there's quite a few here. And of course, that leads me to should you install WatchOS 9.1? Well, for the security updates alone, I would say absolutely, but for the bug fixes and everything else, especially battery life on the latest watches, definitely install this one. As far as overall stability, it's been quite good. I've had no issues, no crashes, everything's working quickly. You saw going into weather or going into different apps seems to be nice and fast. So if we go into music, switch back, go into an app that we don't normally go into. So let me find one here. We'll go into, well, let's open camera remote. It should open pretty quickly, connect to the phone, and then it opens. Sometimes it's faster than others. We'll go into calculator. Again, audiobooks. I haven't been into this for a very long time and it opens right up. No issues with performance. As far as battery life, you'll see here, I have 81% battery and that's since taking it off the charger at about nine this morning and it's 5 PM. So this is really getting me through the day. No problem. And battery health is 100% on this device. So you can see that in settings. So if we go down to settings, you'll see here, we'll go down to battery. You'll see battery and it says 81%. If we go to battery health should be 100%. Of course, it's got optimized charge limit turned on and it's doing pretty well. No real issues. Of course, the Apple Watch Ultra gets incredible battery life. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this update. Of course, we're waiting for watchOS 9.2 betas, which could be as soon as tomorrow, along with iOS 16.2 betas. Typically, it can be the next day or it could be the following week. We just don't know. We don't have a specific date from Apple yet, but usually that's what we'll see. I do get asked all the time, what watch face are you using? And this is actually infograph modular or what they call modular. Now they changed the name of it. And if we go to edit, you'll see here, I have the date in the upper right for the complications. I have messages and the one in the middle is called Lumi. This is a paid app and I have countdown to golden hour. So it's just set as default. And then I have the weather in the bottom left compass in the middle and music in the bottom, right? So nothing really very different, just a regular modular watch face, but with the Lumi app in the middle. Of course I have Wayfinder as well, but that's part of Apple watch ultra. So it's a standard watch face. And so that's everything with watch OS 9.1. Of course, if you found anything else I haven't mentioned, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And as far as this wallpaper, I'll link this in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.